In today's tutorial, let's learn how to do the Scandinavian snowflake crochet afghan together. This is a pattern by me, just for you. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Scandinavian Snowflake Crochet Afghan. These are made up of motifs that look just like this. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to build one of these. I'm going to show you how to do the border so that they can join to a neighbor and then I'm going to cover the main border at the end. So all of this is coming up within today's tutorial. Let's go over some of the anatomy of this particular motif and then let's get started on going step by step. So let's cover what's in this motif. So I'm a kind of a lazy crocheter so I like to do things in sections. So for example we have our color here. I would do everything in all of my motifs that I count out that I want for myself. So I figure out how many I want and then I do all of the white section first. Then what I do is that I put those all aside and then I come back and I do all the red section then next and then I come back and do all the white afterward. The reason why I do it like that is that if you have to keep reading on instructions all the time it just is very time consuming but once you get beyond this main level and you start going step by step like I'm suggesting you can go a lot faster without having to go back to your instructions all the time in order to finish this. It does not take long to make one of these afghans if you can bury the instructions into your brain and do it step by step just like I said. So what I would strongly recommend to you is that you do all of the motifs up until you get to the final border edge. So you're gonna have all these done and they'll be stacked up like a deck of cards. Then what I wanted to do is that we want to start doing the finalizing border. So the very first one I have an example right here will have the final border added to it and then what we're going to do then is the next ones that are going to join with this is that every time you get to a spot where they join is that you're going to create the joining on the opposite side. Okay, so we have to have one completely done just like this, this and then all of the rest will then start joining to the neighbors as you're being able to put it together and there's detailed information available on, about that on my website as well. So let's start the motif together and if you're looking at the colors and you like the colors this is Bernat Super Value Yarn. This is called Natural. It's not white. It's more of like an off-white and then we have Berry Red just like so. Remember the colors that you can do in your project are really subjective to you. So if you want to change them throughout the project again this is your creativity. So you're going to need a, your yarn today. Let's get started and we're gonna start off in the middle. You're gonna need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today, today and let's get your yarn and let's begin to do a slip knot and let's start with the instructions next. So now that we have our slip knot done let's do a chaining of five. So this remember the one on the hook never counts as one. So let's roll that hook back and yarn over. So one, two, three, four and five and let's insert this hook into the beginning chain, yarn over it and pull through. And this will form the very middle of circle Okay, the middle center of your snowflake uh, motif. Now take this yarn and I want you to just kind of wrap it around and just kind of pinch it together with the, with the circle and then in the next round what we're gonna do is bury it underneath so that you'll never see that so you can safely cut it. So that's the whole point of this. You don't want your tails hanging out. Let's move on to officially round number one. So round number one says chain six which counts as a double crochet and a chain three. Okay that's why there's chaining of six and then it says one double crochet into the ring, chain three and do that eleven times. So let's begin. So we're going to chain six. So one, two, three. So that is your double crochet. So four, five, six. That is your chain three. Okay so hopefully that makes sense to you. Now you're going to double crochet into the ring and you need to do that with a total of 11 times. So we're going to then chain three, one, two, three and then double crochet back into the ring. So what's gonna happen by the time you get all the way around these are called posts. One, two and three that you can see there. So you should have a total of 12 of those if you're keeping your, your counts and you gotta make sure you keep your counts with this. So remember it's one, two, three. So that's chaining a three double crochet back into the ring and keep doing that all the way and I want you to do that and I'll meet you back here in just a moment and I'll show you how to finish off this round and move you up to round number two. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I should have a total of uh, uh, sorry 12 of these posts. So you can count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Now you just cannot join it to the, uh, to the first one here. You gotta make sure you chain your three and then just join it to the third chain up. So one, two and three and join it with the slip stitch. 
like so. And that concludes off round number one. So what I want you to do with the straggler that is hanging in the center, we've kind of buried it because we treated it like it was part of the center. I want you to take your scissors and I want you to be able to cut that string out just like this and then therefore you'll have no strings hanging out and it will not distract you any further. Let's move on to round number two. Let's move along to round number two. It says to slip stitch in the chain three space. So right now we are slip stitched into a chain but I will need you now for round two to slip stitch into the first chain three space. So just insert your hook in to the space, yarn over, pull through and through. So now you can see that your hook is actually in a space this time. So now we're going to chain one and we're gonna do one single crochet into that same space followed by a chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Then single crochet back into the same space once again. So here's the trick. The next chain three space, all there's going to be there is two single crochets. So you notice I'm not chaining anything to get there. I'm just immediately just jumping to the next space and doing two single crochets. So now what we can just do, the next chain three space is exactly what we've already done here. So we just insert our hook in and single crochet into the next space, chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and single crochet back into that same space. So what we're going to end up with is that we're gonna end up with six of these because if you notice the motif it's a hexa hexagonal therefore it has six sides and so you should have six of these chain seven loops going all the way around. So once you're here the next one is two single crochets in and then the next one is single crochet first, chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven coming back into that same space for a single crochet and then keep moving around. So I want you to do that and join back here in just a moment and I'll show you what to do to finish off round number two and then move on to round number three. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just following the pattern three, four, five, six and seven. I'm following the pattern and if I'm following it correctly the very last space that you're gonna have will have the two single crochets in there and what I want you to do after you get that done just slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet that you started with just like there. Okay, so you should have six of these loops going all the way around just like you see and now, now let's go on to round number three. So for round number three what we're going to be doing is completing this section right in here. So this loops is what you've just finished. So we're gonna be completing all of this and once you get that done it's really quite simple and then this whole pattern is really not complicated at all. When I designed it I made sure that wasn't gonna rack your brain too much. So we're gonna concentrate on this section next and just pay attention to what we're gonna do. Um, when I designed it I was really being conscientious of the, of the counts in order to make it sit flat when it was doing so. To start off round number three we're gonna immediately just chain one okay and we're not gonna worry about this first single crochet that's what it says miss the next single crochet. We're not gonna do this. We're just gonna play in these big loops okay at this time and then we're gonna play in the spaces in between but let's concentrate on the loop first. We're gonna start off with and go right into the loop and single crochet two times. So one and two. Then we're going to chain two and this will make sense in the next round but just chain two, one and two and now we're gonna put in three double crochets into that same loop. So one, two and three and now we're gonna get even bigger to make the points. So let's begin to do that. So we're gonna do two trebles first. So wrap the hook twice and going into the same loop. Okay, do it again. Now this is a P code that we're about to do. So this and by the way if this is getting too much over you can always just move things. It's just on the loop. It's not in any stitch so everything is adjustable. So to do the Pico I want you to chain four. So one, two, three and four and insert your hook into the top of the first uh, chain or right into the first chain itself and yarn over pull through and through and this creates a round circle loop. I, and I'm gonna show you this again in one more but let's keep on going for those that are following. You're going to treble then two times after this picot. So just wrap the hook twice 
And what we're doing is we're doing the exact same but in the opposite. So we were getting uh, smaller to bigger. Now we're going bigger to smaller. So now we got our two trebles like we just did on this side of the pico. And so we're gonna then go to three double crochets. So one, two, and three. Followed by chain two, one and two. And then single crochet twice more into that loop. So there's a lot going on one loop. So there's two single crochets that basically are joining everything together here. And so we're just gonna put one single crochet into each of those. So one and two and immediately jump to the next loop. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to see on the project where we're going. So this whole thing right here, we can see that there's two single crochets, chain two space and do you see this red one here? So that's attaching to the first double crochet. So it kinda like tucks in underneath to give you that shape of the, the snowflake. Okay, so this is what you're kinda working on at this point. So let's start another loop. So we're just gonna immediately come into the next loop and single crochet two times. One and two followed by chain two. One. Okay, then three double crochets. So we're getting bigger. So one, two, and three. So now we're gonna start our trebles. How many trebles are there? If you guess two, you're right. So wrap the hook twice. And we wanna do two. And now it's that pico. So let's do the pico. So it's four, one, two, three, and four. Insert your hook into the first chain. Yarn over, pull through and through. Now you've created that loop and now you're gonna treble two more times. So we're gonna come down the other side of that same loop. So that was one and two. So the two trebles are in. Now we're going back to um, double crochets. So there's gonna be three of those. One, two, and three. Followed by chain two and two single crochets. Do you see that I'm moving that yarn out of the way like the stitches. So you might need to do that. Okay, so now there's two single crochets here before the next one. You're gonna fill those in and it'll be two single crochets, one in each for the next. So the, here's what you're creating here, just like so. And so I want you to complete the rest of the four and I'll meet you back here and I'll show you what to do next. So I'm just coming up all the way back around and I'm finishing on my chain two. I'm single crocheting twice into the final petal area calling it a petal, should say snowflake edge. Don't forget that you still have to do one single crochet into the final two single crochets at this point. And now your white is completely done but you make sure that you have to single or sorry slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that you started with and then that brings that in balance. So let's cut our yarn at this point. And I found with myself I didn't have to use a darning needle in order to hide my loose ends. I just gotta make sure I bury it long enough. So when I go to cut this what I want to do is that I want to continue to weave this backward into past this into this section over here. And what this will do is that it will prevent you from grabbing the darning needle if you don't want to do that because I know how much you all love that. So I just wanna just kinda weave myself back into this section and then when I'm gonna come back around this section it's gonna bury it because it's gonna trap it underneath. So what I would like to do then is just safely just trim out this yarn at this point. And you can always just clean it up at the end as well. And now let's get ready and we're gonna move up to round number four. And it says join B. B means a color and that'll be the berry red and that's coming up next. So I'm now ready for round number four and it says join B into any inside circle of a Pico joint. So when you look at this, these, there's actually circles right in the points itself because of the way that we did the Pico. So what I want you to do is I want you to grab your yarn up that you wanna change the color to. Mine happens to be berry red. If you don't wanna do this color, it's up to you. It's your creativity. I could see a nice black and white one of these as well. So what I want to do is put this, do a slip knot, put it onto the hook and insert it into the center of the Pico. And what I like to do is that I like to get both strands and wrap over pull through and through and that'll trap that loose end in and what I want to do is then just leave this loose end out and then I wanna bury it. So once we have that done we're going to chain one and then we're going to do three single crochets into the same pico. So we got one, two, and three. 
and now what we're going to do is that we're going to build and start off small, get bigger to the point and then jump to the next one. So here's how we're going to do it. So we're just gonna make sure that we have enough counts. So we have a uh, one half double crochet, then we have two double crochets and then two trebles in order to finish this off on one side. So let's begin. So to, we're gonna half double crochet first into the first stitch just like so. We're going to do uh, a double crochet into the next two and I have a loose end hanging out here. I'm just gonna bury that out of the way. So we're going to do a double crochet in the next two. So one and two and then the last two that we're going to do are going to be trebles. Okay, so you wrap the hook twice for the treble. Don't forget to do that. Just like that. Okay, so we've gone from a, a small to big. It's almost like a game of Sesame Street really with Ernie saying big or small. So we're going to immediately then just jump over to the first um, stitch over here. It's the first double crochet and we're gonna start off with doing our trebles first. So we're gonna go from big to small. So we're going to do a treble, another treble. So another one in the next one is a treble. Then we're going to do two doubles. So one and two. And then the final will be one half double. Okay? And I'm going to go through a, another side of this. So if you're not catching on at this moment, don't worry about it. So we have the pico next. So go inside of the pico and single crochet three times into that pico. So let's review. So this is what's happening here. You're kind of bringing everything together. So let's do it again. So we start off with the first one and we want to put in a half double to start. Okay, the next two will be double crochets. One and two and then the final two before the, doing the jump is trebles. So one treble each. Then what we're going to do is jump to the next one. So we're gonna start off with the treble and it's the first double crochet that you're going into. So there's gonna be two trebles in a row. Then two doubles. Okay and then the final on that is going to be a half double. So you've gone from big to small and then you go for the pico right inside and three single crochets. Continue to do this now on every side and this is what you're kind of seeing how it's happening. So you're getting that point of the motif being a hexagonal at this point and we're gonna do some more fancy footwork after this but uh, continue to do this idea all the way around and I'll meet you back here and we'll start off round number five. So now I'm back and we just have to then slip stitch to the beginning a single crochet that you started with and just slip stitch like this and now we're ready to go for round number five. But you can't just start where you're about to start now. Let me show you what to do next and the next round is really easy. So let's start on round number five. So you've slip stitched to the beginning single crochet and if you look at it there's three single crochets in the in the pico. But the first one is not the center is it? No it's not. So what we want to do is that we want to move over and go to the next stitch available to you and just yarn over and pull through and through. And now this puts you back into the center and what you want to do is pay attention to the center points. So every time you have a group of three you want to pay attention to where those are in this particular round. So let's we're going to start up by chaining one. So chain one and into the same stitch you want to do three single crochets. So one, two, and three and now you just want to follow all the way along the edge. One stitch, one stitch gets one single crochet all the way to the next corner. So how do you know where the next corner is? Well you look for that group of three and the middle one of the three is your next corner. So every time you hit a corner you wanna put in three single crochets. So I'm about to hit the first corner. So I've just single crochet my, crocheted my way across. So here is my corner. So this is part of the corner, that's part of the corner and that's part of the corner. So three, so the middle one is my new corner. So I single crochet in the, in the new corner I want to put in three single crochets to continue that bend 
that you need in order to make it a hexagonal. So then you start again going down the next side. So you put in your three there and one single crochet into each going all the way around. Now I decided to put this round in like you're thinking why did you do that? You know you're kind of using up all this time but blah blah blah. But I did it so that it can make it really stable so that the afghan will really hold itself together really quite nicely. Not everybody likes their afghans to have a lot of open space or lace and so I wanted to make sure by putting in this round that it stays nice and tight together so that there's not a lot of open space. So there is a method to my madness. You just have to believe in me once in a while and there we go. So here's your next corner. So we have just like you see here there's the three, there's the middle. So we wanna make sure you're paying attention to the three and then in the middle one put in three single crochets and then continue. So I want you to continue with this round. This is the last time you're going to be using red until we do the joining border. But uh, let's just uh, get you to do this first and then we have one more round of natural before then we start doing all the joining and all the really really fun stuff. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I'm continuing the single crochet all the way until I get to the very first single crochet that I started with. Make sure your counts are not off. Okay, get that final one in and then you just wanna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet like so and then you just wanna trim your yarn and weave in your ends. Now this is kind of the same way as we did with the white is that if we do a good job in weaving them in you're not gonna have to use a darning needle afterward as well. So just kind of going back along the edging and just kind of weaving your tails in. I do about an inch to two inches uh, generally on this kind of idea. There's sometimes you need to pull out that darning needle but I've designed this in a way that the yarn will kind of lock into each other and uh, cause I'm kind of lazy like that. So I've just weaved it in. I give it a good stretch so that I know that if somebody's ever trying to stretch your afghan it's at the maximum amount of stretch and then I can just trim and be done with that. So what we're going to do is we're gonna bring back natural. And we're gonna go one more round of natural and then we're gonna play with the borders then next. So here's your final round before you start doing the border round. So we're gonna start off with natural. Do a slip a knot onto your hook first. So what I want you to do, you can pick any, any side, doesn't matter, as long as you get the middle one of the group of three. Okay, so just go for a corner. So just look for the middle one. Doesn't matter which one, they're all equal. And just I take both strands over, pull through and then I'm going to use that now and chain up three. So one, so that's now locked two and three and I want to double crochet two more times into that same space or that same stitch that we joined to. So this is your new corner that you're doing. So now you're going to double crochet yourself across the flat edge. Okay, so this is a really no big deal. There's no adding, subtracting really other than the corners. You just have to continue to grow out. So where, where are we gonna find the corner? Well if you remember that there's three single crochets on every corner. So it's gonna be the middle single crochet of the three that is your next corner of where you're going to add in your three double crochets. So I'm coming up along the edge to the first corner and you can physically see that it's turning. So that gives you an indication so you don't have to go too wrong there. And I literally wanna stop and just kinda look where my third one is. So there's one, two and three. Okay, there's the middle. So I got one more to go that's regular and then the middle one is gonna get three double crochets. So one, two and three and then the corner is done and then we just continue with the next one going all the way down until the next corner. So please do that and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. We're gonna be starting to do your, the, the joining work next but we have to do one complete in, uh, complete around and then I'm gonna show you how to do the joining ones after that as well. So I'm coming all the way back around and we're just the last stitch left. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three that we started with. And this is the end of the white. So say goodbye bye white. We're done with you for this particular uh, project. Uh, you just have to do all your motifs. Just again simply just trim your yarn and weave in the ends. So the next revolutions that we're about to do is that we're gonna do the border and I wanna explain this before we do this um, so that you're on the same track that I am at this point. And so this is how you're going to to do all of your, your steps along the way. So now that I've weaved that in, I could just safely just trim, pull and there is the motif done and this is just like the ones that we had already off camera. Just like this. 
Okay, and what we want to do then at this point is that we want to uh, begin to join things together. So let me show you how to do that next and um, that's what we're gonna do right after this. So we're now ready to do the joining process and as I said in the beginning of this tutorial is that we want to do everything in stages. It's just faster for you to do all of the white section first and then come back and do all the reds and then come back and do all the whites. And you, so you're just gonna gather them, gather them up like an assembly line. You don't have to read the pattern as much and you'll have really great uh, success as a result. So now we want to be able to start joining these to the neighbor. So to join these to a neighbor you have to be very conscientious of one thing. So off camera here what I have is that I have one that has a border completely done. Okay you see it here in green. I have just did these in different colors in order to just to kind of see if red was really what I wanted to go for. And what we want to do is that we have to do one complete border first. So one afghan or one motif is gonna have the motif done all the way around. The rest of them what we're going to do is that we're going to get to a certain spot and then where they're going to join we want to begin to assemble and these things are going to get assembled like honeycomb and the way that I'm about to show you is going to then uh, be able to build on the one. Okay so we have to do one. So you can never attach for example say you're about to put a border on this one and this does not have a border you cannot attach them. So one of them at least that you're joining to must have the border already completely done in order to create that join. So let's begin and I'm going to show you how to do the border next and we have this is gonna be for the one the very first one and the only one that you'll do all the way around just like so. Let's start off with doing the border and what I want you to notice here is that there's something really weird going on in the middle. <laughs> you know leave it to me I always do something weird and the reason why I did something weird is that the counts are gonna be off if I didn't do it the way that I'm about to show you next. So what we, when we go to join you'll see that there's three double crochets here in the white and we join to the middle one here and then we're going to jump over every other stitch. And we have to do it so that there's four gap spaces so one, two, three and four and then there's two in a row single crocheted and then again one, two, three and four. So at any point if you have screwed up and I'm not saying that there is and I'm not denying that there isn't but on my particular afghan sometimes I screwed up and actually missed my counts or I, I was off by one stitch I faked it. Honestly nobody's really gonna notice unless you're gonna fake everything and then you're in big trouble. So what you wanna just do is that if for example I come out and I'm skipping over, skipping over and then I realize I'm gonna skip over the middle one and go to the next one over I will fake it and just put it in there anyway. So sometimes a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. So let's uh, begin and we're going to start off by joining into a side here. Our biggest thing is that we have to pay attention to the four gapping spaces that you see here and then do the two center and then the four on the next side. It's no big deal and we're gonna do that on every side that you see. So every side is equal to each other. Okay so I chose red for my particular join. It's up to you what you want to do. You can do a completely different color. Again this is your creativity. Don't let people tell you what you can and cannot do. Okay this is your creativity. So if you like a certain color who are we to judge you? We're just gonna support you here on the crochet crowd. So we have our three right in the center. The middle one, let's insert our hook into the middle one and we're going to yarn over and pull through and through. Now because this is the big honk and knot that you see here <laughs> That is a technical word today so don't just bear with me. It looks like a big ugly knot at this point. I count that as a single crochet because it, if you do another single crochet in here it's gonna be so obvious that it real, really will stick out and this is when you can fake it and actually be in real big trouble. So what I would do is just take the straggler over again and I want you to chain over three times. So one, two, oh that was a two, that was a faking two, two and three. Coming back down skip the next one available to you. Go to the second one over and single crochet. So chain three. One, two, and three. Skip the next one. Single crochet. Isn't this so hard? I know. One, two, three. This is why they want me teaching on our YouTube because I'm so fabulous with making it so hard for you. <laughs> so okay so we have three gaps right now. We're looking for a fourth. So one, two, and three. And skip the next one and there's your fourth. So as I promised you there would be four gaps. So one, two, three and four. So once you have your four the next one immediately after this is a single crochet and then we start again 
with doing the gap thing again. So chain three, one, two, and three. Skip the next one, go to the second one over. One, two, and three. Skip the next one. One, two, and three. Skip the next one. Okay. So what we have to do then is we have to sometimes fake it. Okay. So you have one, two, and three. And for whatever reason, and I don't know why this is, but for whatever reason, I have an extra stitch in here. But I, it's actually kind of a good thing because I wanna show you how I can fake it. <laughs> okay, so what I've gotta do is that if I skip over and go over to the one, I'm not in the center. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna skip over the two so that I keep the momentum of the, the four gapping spaces. You know what, I gotta do what I gotta do. Okay, the, this is just a reality crochet. Some people expect to be perfect all the time. Life ain't like that. So let's begin. So we're in the middle. Let's start again. So one, two, and three, and we're gonna create another side here. So we skip the first one, single crochet over. One, two, and three. Skip the next one, single crochet. One, two, and three. Skip the next one. Okay, and we want to do it so that there's four gapping spaces again. Now don't be confused on where you're counting that from. So you're looking for the co uh, the corner, so it's the middle one. So you have one, two, three, and four. So once you have that four, the next one is gonna be a single crochet. So you have your two in a row, and then one, two, and three, start skipping again. So one. So the key element at this point is that if I have a new faking it over here is that it's going to matter on the external of this and how it's joining to all your neighbors because if you start adding more stuff here and not here you're never gonna join it with anything else. Like that's just the reality of, of the whole thing. So one, two, and three. And again I seem to be missing, I seem to be having one extra. Huh. I have no idea why that is. I never had that many issues on my original but something is a little off, but I'm gonna stick with it, okay? So if this is happening to you, just go with it. Okay, don't fight it, just go with it. So let's start another side. One, two, three. Okay, skip the next one. So one, two, three. I do apologize, I don't know why that's not working out. I could be too busy yik yakking at you. One, two, and three. But you know what? A true crocheter knows how to fake it. I'm sorry. So here we go. So a corner. So here's one, two, three, and fourth gap. Crochet into the next. And then one, two, and three. Skip the next. One. Okay, and I'm continuing to go all the way to the next corner. See, and this is interesting. See, now this time it's right. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three. I know. They don't pay me for my good looks. I don't even think they pay me for my brain if you ask me. So anyway, I happen to be right on this one. So my key element is that you just need to make sure you have eight gapping spaces and if you have to fake it or make it, if some judge is gonna come at you at a, at a country fair, <laughs> deny everything and just hold your hand waiting for your ribbon. <laughs> That's what I would do. So continue in that same passion, uh, fashion going all the way around and get this one done and then I'm gonna show you how to join them to your neighbor then for um, the remainder and that's coming up next. So I'm coming up all the way around you can see I'm going all the way around. Look how fabulous this is. Mm -hmm. So when I was doing this the first two sides had an extra stitch. I don't know why that is. I'm gonna blame the snow because it's snowing outside at this moment and then the other sides were all perfect. I know. What can I say? Actually, you know what? I have a bad habit of blaming our assistant Laura Jean for everything. <laughs> she takes a lot of abuse, let me tell you. So she's kind of, we're doing a live feed at the moment. She can see that I'm saying that. So she knows it's true. But she always sends me an angel face. So here we go. So we have the final gaps. Okay, this is already in the final. And one, two, and three. And then we just go into the corner first single crochet or that remember that big honk and ugly knot that's where I've gone. Okay so just look for that knot. Did do a slip stitch and finish off this color. And just pull through and through. <laughs> I'm saying what to do my fingers are not doing that. So let's uh, just trim off our yarn. And this is where you're really gonna have to weave in your ends really quite carefully. So just pull through 
and pull up on it so it's kind of a knotting and just go in and out. Now it, the next ones are going to attach around these sections here so you wanna make sure you're getting it stuck in there so that when they go to join with each other they kind of the, they're kind of grabbing onto each other already naturally. And so you just wanna kind of work your way down those in there. Sometimes your fingers are better than a hook. <laughs> So here we go. Okay, so the first one is done. So now all the rest of them are going to attach to this one. Okay, so this is where you start building. Now the biggest thing is that you gotta pay attention to and let me just take a quick uh, pause here and I'll come back and I'll give you some tips before starting the next one. So let me give you a tip before we start doing the joining. So here we go and we wanna make sure that the motif is not turned upside down. So here is what I've been working on. You can kind of see it kind of wants to lift up like a bowl of soup kind of idea. See how it's kind of lifting up? The other side is kind of facing down. So you see it's dipping down. So this is the wrong side. This is the right side. So the biggest mistake that you could possibly do at this point is that you could attach them together so that they're not facing in the same direction because literally if you, one is upside down you are gonna physically see the difference. Do you see the difference here? Do you see this is kind of more compact looking etc. Other than the color being a little off. I don't know why that is. <laughs> so what we have here. So we wanna make sure that the right sides are facing each other. So when we go to join them we wanna be very conscientious and when I did the joining I kinda laid them out on a table to do the join to make sure that I wasn't gonna screw it up and once you get, once you have it and you know what's right you can continue to go and then lift it off the table in order to make it work. So let's begin to do a joining motif and let me show you how to do that next. So we're gonna start the joining at this point and we're just gonna create a slip knot and put it on your hook. So we wanna grab the motif that you want to join to one that's already done. So you can never join this to one that's not been done. It has to join to one that already has the border waiting for you. So here we go. So we're gonna insert into the middle one of the three, yarn over and pull through. And so you get that big honk and knot again. Okay, so don't worry about that. So just wanna chain three. So one, two and three. So what I would recommend is never join it the first time. Okay, never join it together in the first time. Go one layer here. At any point in this afghan you should only be joining to three at one time. Three sides. Okay, if you want to, I wouldn't go any more than that and if you plan yourself and do it right you don't need to do any more than that. So let's uh, begin. So we're gonna skip over the next stitch, a single crochet in the next and we wanna create the four gapping spaces. One, two, three. Be in t before we get to the middle. So one, two, and three. Once you see how to join this, these go really quickly. The join is no big deal. Okay, so there is my four gapping spaces just like you see. The next one is a single crochet and then we do the four gapping spaces again. So one, two, and three. And let's see if my counts are off on this one. One, two, three. I did this on the cruise ship, this particular one. So one, two, and three. And my counts are right. So right, I, when I skip over I'm gonna be on the, the very end one. So there you go. Who would have thought that, right? So we're going right into the edge. So now we're gonna start joining it to the neighbor. It does not matter at this point which side you're going to join to because they're all equal at this point. It's just a matter of like how you're going to do the next one because then it's gonna start honeycombing, honeycombing itself together. So what we're going to do is that we're going to substitute the chaining of three with a join. So you're going to chain one, okay, then you're going to slip stitch to the joining neighbor on the very same gapping space and we'll cover this and then we're gonna chain one and then we're gonna skip one and come into the next. So here's how you do it. So you're right on a corner. So we're gonna chain one and we want to, we are gonna fill in this section here. So we're going to join it to the neighbor at the same point. Okay, so look for that center one right there and we wanna come into the very next space because that's what we're creating at this point. Okay, so here's the center. So we're coming in and just wrap around and slip stitch it together. Done chain one and then come back to the one you're working on, skip one and single crochet. Okay, so let me review this again. So you're gonna chain one this time then go into the next space that's available to you. Okay, so it matches, slip stitch, chain one, skip one and go into the next. So chain one, going into the next one on the other side, 
slip stitch that and then chain one. So you wanna be conscientious of these four gapping spaces. So I can see three at this point. So chain one, slip stitch to the next like so, chain one and then coming, uh, skip one and go into the next. So here is my four gapping spaces. So one, two, three and four. So the next one is going to be another single crochet and if you look on the other side there's another single crochet in there as well. Okay, so they match each other. So chain one to start the next one again, jumping over to the next space, chain one and coming back. So where you're joining them, you're going to substitute this instruction instead of just doing a chain three and skipping over. You want to just wrap around the next space on the other side. Okay, and you wanna go all the way down the edge. So even if you're off by a count, which I'm not in this particular case, is that you wanna make sure that you gotta fake it so that you end up with the same amount of gapping spaces. So I've just done the very last one and then I'm coming into the middle one to complete that side. So here's what it looks like at this point. Okay, so you've just joined everything without having to use a, a darning needle and now we're just gonna start this side here. So if there was another one here that was already done, okay, you'll continue that same instruction but if there's nothing there, you just simply just chain three, one, two, three and continue to do the side like you have been. and that's all you have to do for these particular ones. So it's so for example in the next one here like if you go to join it and it's to these two here when you go to join the next one for example you'll have two sides that are being joined at the same time and then you just keep building and building and at any, any point it'll only ever be three sides at one time. And that's how you would do this. So continue to do this all the way around. Be mindful to keep the eye open for that four gapping spaces. I was just about to make a mistake. So you got four, so one, two, three and four. And then we just come to the next one for a single crochet and then chain three again. So continue to do this all the way around and when we come back I'll cover on how to make the border completely at this point. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I just want to join to the very first single crochet. So now I've gone all the way around in this. I want to trim off my yarn and you could just have to continue to do this until you have all your motifs joining together and again it's really no big deal. So in the next part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do the border itself. The border is relatively easy. Um, I'm gonna teach it in a way that you can change the shape of my afghan um, to be something completely different if you wish. I'm just gonna give you the clues that you need to look for in order to adapt and again this is a no brainer in my opinion. I did it in a way that it's gonna be easy for you to be able to follow along. So once we have this done here you're gonna have all your motifs then done and it will look like this. Okay, they'll all be joining together just like this and what we're going to do next is that we're gonna show you how to do the border and that will be coming up right after this. So we're now going to start doing the border at this point and what you're gonna have on the outside you'll have um, some pieces where it'll go completely around a motif. Okay, so you might have one joining over here. This might be completely exposed on the end and then where they're going to join you'll notice that there's a dip in and then back out. And so if you can identify what is um, what I refer to in the pattern. So this is a less than 180 degree angle and this is more than 180 80 degree angle and if you can identify that it makes it a lot easier to be able to follow. So what I want you to do is that I want you to come out to one and it will probably be on the outside of your like an outside corner or near to a corner and what I want you to do is that I want you to identify it and this is a more than 180 uh, degree turn and I want you to start there first and then you make decisions going all the way around. Doesn't matter how you've attached them you're always just gonna have more than 180 and less or and less than 180. So let's grab your yarn up, create a slip knot and we're going to go into any corner that is more than 180. So when we go to join it you'll notice that this red is right in the center of the three and I want you to join it to the first one on this side. Okay, right there and just go right into a gapping space and pull your yarn through, just yarn over and I want you to chain up three. So one, two and three and I want you to double crochet two more times into that same space. 
Okay, and that is um, gonna make sense in a second. So on the other side of the center point, you're gonna put in three double crochets on this side. And there's a reason why you're doing this in just a sec. So what we're going to do is along the tire side, even just skipping over this middle where there's two, there's only gonna be two double crochets going in every space. There's no chaining between anything. It's just simply just double crochets. So that had two, this is gonna get two. And you make a decision every time you hit to a joining point or to a corner. And this is the middle one. There's two in a, in a row here. We just immediately just skip right over. Um, I tried adding extra here at this point and it makes it buckle. So if you want it to sit down, just continue just to continue just um, to double crochet. And you're gonna get yourself to a joining point. Next. That's coming up on my particular sample here. Okay, so what we want to do is that we're gonna pay attention to this one here and this one but we're gonna totally skip over this middle section right here. So we double crochet into the space right before the join and we immediately just reach over to the next space that's available in the next one and double crochet two times. That causes it to want to make that turn in order to keep the shape. So we then continue along and then we make a choice. So I'm gonna get you to the next corner where I'll show you the next choice and then you just continue around in the same fashion. Okay, so in just two double crochets into each, even the middle section where there's two single crochets, we just jump over that as if it's not even there. Okay, and just come into the other space on the other side. It was put in there to keep the, the, the motifs in balance to each other, that's why I did that. So I'm coming up to a corner soon. So we want to pay attention to which one is the center DC or double crochet and we make a decision based on that. So at this point it's going to be more than 180 so it's coming up and around so it's more than 180. So on this side of the space there's going to be three double crochet in that spot instead of two. And on the other side of that center it's gonna be three double crochets and that allows it to turn around consistently and stay flat. So then all the rest of the sections here is going to be two double crochets into each space until you get to the next spot. So there will probably be another join uh, probably around here somewhere. So it will probably dip down. Just do the same thing. Double crochets. Just skip over and just double crochet into the next space and do that all the way around for round number one of your border. When you get all the way back around you've already done the first corner. So make sure you don't redo and put a third uh, three double crochets in the final one before you before you do the join. So once you get your two in there just join it to the uh, top of the beginning chain three that you started off with and then fasten this off and the round is then complete going all the way around. So what we want to do is that we're gonna introduce red back into the equation. Okay and your border's now been stabilized and it gets really simple from this point. There's no more thinking uh, uh, about this particular pattern. Um, we don't have to really grow it anything anymore and I'm gonna show you what to do next and that's there. So there's two more rounds left and the red is next before bringing back the white one more time. So starting off in a corner you can do the one before, the one after, it really doesn't matter. We're gonna skip every other stitch going all the way around anyway so it's not a big deal. So what I want you to do is that we're just gonna start off and here's the corner I'm gonna start off in the first one. Just insert in, yarn over. Okay and then just pull through and, and count that as a single crochet and I want you to chain one. So just one. Skip the next single crochet and single crochet in the next. Okay so then chain one, skip the next crochet, uh, double crochet and go into the next. Chain one, skip the next double crochet and chain into the next. And I want you to do that all the way around. Okay so that their projects should stay in balance. So even if you're getting to the points in between the joins it doesn't matter. You're just chaining one and skipping one and single crocheting into the next. And this is create and creating the look that you're gonna get all the way around. So please do that and when we come back then I'll show you what to do for your final round which is an extended single crochet um, stitch. It's kind of really neat. 
When you get all the way back around you simply just want to finish it off and you just want to join to the first single crochet that you did. So make sure you do your chain one first before finishing that and then we're just gonna weave in our ends at this point and then we're gonna bring our white back and do a final revelation of that particular uh, afghan and then that's it for this particular design. So let's start our final revolution and we're gonna get our white ready and we're going to go into any one of these chain one spaces. It doesn't matter which one you go into it's all gonna balance out anyway and here we go. So we're just gonna insert in yarn over, go up over top and pull through. So what we want to do is that we want to single crochet back into the same chain one space and we want to do an extended pico. So how you do the extended pico is that you are going to then uh, chain four. So one, two, three and four coming into the very big uh, chain one that you started with okay right there and pull through and through and then single crochet back into that chain one space. Okay that's back in there in red. So just going into that same space and chain one. Sorry a single crochet and then that's one. Okay so then the next one we're just coming into the next chain one space immediately just single crochet there and then chain four. One, two, three and four coming into the first chain yarn over through and through and then single crochet back into that ch uh, same chain one space back in the red. And these are creating uh, I like to call a snowflake ed edge basically. So come into the next one single crochet chain four one two three four coming back into the first chain yarn over through and through and then single crochet back into that first chain one space. I need you to do that all the way around. When you get back to the other side you're just gonna simply just join to the first single crochet to finish and that is it for this particular tutorial on how to do all of this and it's really uh, quite easy when you break it down step by step. So in the end you will end up with an amazing Scandinavian snowflake afghan. You'll have everything joined. You'll have your borders completely done. You'll have your extended uh, picots that we've just uh, finished off doing and it's going to look amazing and it's quite sharp and there's no snowing, uh, sewing involved and a lot of people would like that. So this is my uh, particular design. Please enjoy it. It is a free pattern available on the crochetcrowd.com and for more free patterns and ideas please stay tuned to Yarn Sprigsons or the crochetcrowd.com and we'll see you and have an amazing day. Until next time I'm Mikey your host.